Good morning. Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm Tony Torrance. We're going to tie some Chinook Comets this morning. Um, it's been done before, and we're doing it again. And the reason is we've got some new materials I want to cover, um, some different options, uh, clousers, or uh, comets, excuse me, I'm stuck on clousers this morning. Comets are uh, a pattern that's been around a long time and a staple of the Chinook fishermen on the Northwest. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about tailing material. I've got a couple different tailing materials here. Um, traditionally, bucktail has been the material of choice. Um, we now have some new materials like Crafter, Ultra Soft, Flows in the Water Well, Arctic Fox Tail is a, another great choice. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I've, I've done before the, uh, the uh, Crafter, I'm going to use a little uh, fox tail in this particular fly. And I'm just going to cut a little chunk off of here. Now you look, there's guard hairs and there's under fur. What I want to do is get most of the under fur out, keep a little bit of it for the flow. Don't want too heavy of a fly, so I'm going to pull a few guard hairs out. Get that tail just too thick on some of these flies, and it just doesn't move real well. The guard hairs are going to give you a nice stiff tail. I tend to tie the tails a little longer than most people because I want that to really swim. Craft fur is another great option. Bucktail, of course. You know, any of the hairs that have a little bit of rigidity to them. And then when this gets wet, it's going to lay down like yay. <clears throat> We've used uh, crystal flash, flash a ton in the past for our flashing materials in the tails of these. We have a new material called uh, Ice Dub Shimmer. Um, this sparsely used in these tails will add a little bit of flash and will move really well with the tail. So uh, I'm going to take this and really get it down to a fairly sparse amount. One thing nice about both these materials is they don't bulk. They like don't. Like Bucktail or like Crystal Flash. Or, I mean, not that Crystal Flash bulks a ton, but these really lay slim. Yeah. And this material blends. You know, if you tie, tie it in about mid-shank, spread it out a little bit, and then wrap back, it gets it kind of mixed into the tail there. So now I'm going to move forward. Now this hook I'm using is a bonefish hook uh, made by Gamagatsu. I like it really, really well for this purpose. Um, it's an SL45 um, size 4. You can tie it, you know, I've caught these fish on hooks the size of 10s and 12s. Um, the old glow book Gamagatsu uh, hook, a C14S is another great if you're going to go small and want to keep a little bit of gap size. <clears throat> And then there's the um, L11S, and it's a three, eight, uh, three times heavy hook, uh, great for clousers and for these style, and you can go down in size as well. Next, we want to put um, some eyes in. I take uh, one of these boxes. Hairline has these available. They come, there are 10 sections in them. They have a great heavy latch system in them. And I get all my eyes set up so I have them all in one place. Um, that way I'm not hunting around for materials. Um, I go from small eyes, these are mediums, the painted eye available from hairline, and then the large eyes, which I commonly use on shad flies or some of the bigger um, comets. Okay? You can also use um, lead eyes if you're dealing with deeper pools, faster water. Okay. So now I'm going to put this fluorescent eye on here just to add a little pop to this fly. Um, a drop of um, Zap a gap is never a bad idea on the base of your thread. And then you can also place it with the brush on the thread and wrap it around. That really will secure the eyes well. <clears throat> so now I've got those eyes in there. Body materials, lots and lots of choices. Um, Ice Dub has a beautiful chartreuse uh, dubbing material that you can use. You can place a rib through it if you want to. Um, a staple of clousers for me is the uh, flat braid, uh, flat diamond braid from Hairline. I love this chartreuse material. You can get it in gold and silver and in black. Um, we're going to do this little guy here in chartreuse. 
Now you've got to have some contrast in these flies so they pop. We'll bring this behind the tail to stand that tail up. That'll help you from getting tail wrap. Okay. If you just tie it straight out the back, you're going to be fighting that as it wraps around the bend of the hook all day on you. Okay, so now I've got that. The next thing I want to do is take my chart pack or chart ad marker, and I do this a lot on my tails, and I will take this and just run barring stripes on there. And I'll grab it from this side and put some barring in there. Contrast on the tail and it works well. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of hackle in there. Um, so I'm just taking that, I'm tying this tip first. And I'm going to tie this collar style. I'm spending a little more time probably on this fly than normal because I want to uh, really talk about you know the different colors that are available. The body material on these um, can be a lot of different things. Ligerton has a mini flat braid. Yeah, that's nice. That is a awesome um, material, and it's also UV reactive. So that fly is essentially done. Now the black collar on that <clears throat> creates a contrast. We have a tail that's going to swim really well. We have a good strong hook with a decent gap, but not too much that it's going to snag fish. And this fly will ride like this in the water, so it's uh, less apt to catch the bottom. And there's your uh, tutorial on Chinook Comets.